At this time, I'd like to thank you all for joining us for our Theosophy Science Lecture, which is a part of every year's program. This year, I think we have a very special opportunity uh, because of our guest speaker. Uh, I'm going to tell you a few things about him. I'm going to have to severely edit his bio because it is quite extensive and I really do not want to take up the time that he would have to speak with speaking about him. So a few things that you do in fact need to know about our speaker. First of all, Abaya Shri Srimal Jain is the name of today's speaker on science and theosophy. Uh, he's, his background is as a graduate in chemical engineering, which puts him squarely in the field of science, but my particular interest in inviting him to come and speak to us has been not just that he has a scientific background, but as we know in the world today, all of our daily lives are involved in various fields of science, perhaps largely unbeknownst to us. But he is a man who has been able to embrace really cutting edge sorts of sciences from a business perspective. And so from the perspective of promotion of science into the daily lives of individuals, he's been able to have a remarkable impact in many, many ways. Just to tell you a little bit about his particular background, he's the founder of Hello. He's the founder of uh, Sashun, which is a multiple million dollar corporation that operates internationally. Uh, it's a pharmacy, pharmaceuticals. Probably any one of you who has ever had a headache Anywhere you may live in the world, if you are someone who takes ibuprofen, you have already met today's speaker in a very indirect way. But his global manufacturing is responsible for a large percentage of the uh, ibuprofen products that are taken. But that's one aspect. He also has become intensely involved these days in uh, nanotechnology for medical uses. Nanotechnology involves very, very minute sorts of particles which are used within the body to treat diseases which otherwise might require uh, invasive radiation, invasive sorts of chemicals. And he's developing technologies that are going to be applicable not just in India, but around the world uh, based on Ayurvedic principles. So this is yet another thing. Uh, many of you are familiar with the field of stem cell research. Uh, Abeya has developed, he was on the cutting edge of that and is responsible for the development of the largest stem cell bank currently operative in the world. Additionally, many of you, when you are not pursuing your intense theosophical interests, have found time to go to the movies. And if you have ever attended the movies, you might be aware of some of these blockbuster types of movies that are out there with Spider-Man and with Men in Black. All of these sorts of films that require very intensive computer graphic technology. Always, I assume that this was the sole province of Hollywood and that it was all done in California or New York. Incorrect. The, he developed a computer graphics uh, studio based in Chennai that was in fact responsible for the production of such movies as Spider-Man, as uh, Men in Black, all of these highly intensive movies involving computer graphics. His corporations involve about 7,000 people worldwide. Uh, he's also 
involved in educational pursuits. I should say, too, that Abeya is a practicing Jain. And as a result of his beliefs and of his practice, no matter what industry he finds himself involved in, it is always something where he is insistent that 100% vegetarian, whether it's a school, whether it's a canteen for one of his businesses, whether it's a center for commerce, 100% vegetarian, 100% alcohol-free has been the standard for all of his uh, business operations. He's also the promoter and the chief donor for a women's, a Jain women's college in Chennai, which I had the opportunity to visit. It's a remarkable school, about 4,000 girls, all vegetarian there. One of the remarkable things that he has done there, he is, if nothing else, a visionary and inspiring sort of man. Somehow or another, I don't know where this idea came from, he had the idea that the women, that India needs to be much more highly represented in terms of global sporting activities. And somehow he came upon the idea that he wanted to have an archery team, a women's archery team, at his women's university. He went out, uh, met and arranged for one of the great uh, teachers and instructors in archery to come to work with the girls at his school. And he told the gentleman that he had two conditions. First of all, it wasn't even a condition. In his mind, he said, I don't just want an archery team. It's not just a pastime for girls. This must be a team that will be able to compete in the Olympics. And anyone who knows Olympic athletics knows that that's a standard that is reached, dreamed of by many, reached by very, very few. So that was one thing. He said, my two conditions, that in taking on this project with these girls, you will not seek out finance from any other source. All of the needs I will be sure that they are provided. Of course, the instructor could readily agree to that. The second condition was that the Olympians would be drawn from no outside source but had to come from the pool of students that were attending this one school of 4,000 in the middle of a country of one billion people. When he told Mr. Who that, the name of the fellow is Who, that was where he started to have a little bit of a problem. He said, you're asking me, sir, to find a whale in the middle of a pond. This is a little bit too much. I should say, though, that that was 35 months ago, and as of this date, that women's archery team currently has the highest rated female archer in the world as one of its students, and a second one who is also one of the most highly rated people in the world. It's impossible, but I'm telling you what it is. So before introducing him, I should say, in conversation with him, because I've gotten to know him over the past year, one of my curiosities was this. Being involved in so many things, having so many businesses, and all of them successful, uh, creating an archery system that is now going to the Olympics, how is it that you can remain interested in so many different things? How do you keep your focus and interest on so many different things? 
his answer to me was quite instructive about the man and about an approach to life. He said, in answer to how I can become, remain interested, he said, I am utterly disinterested in all of them. He works with supreme energy along each of these lines, but in terms of attachment to any one of them, there's a complete disinterest. And that this is something of the key to the success of all of them. So with that being said, I leave you to hear the words yourself from Mr. Abeya Shri Shri Mal Jain on today's subject, science for health and consciousness. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, for this very, very generous introduction. First, I bow to the souls who are sitting here and with my due respect, I want to talk about the task given by Tim to talk on science for health and consciousness. First, I must thank him for inviting me after hearing that one word where I said that I detach myself from all the industries which I run or all the projects which I run. Because if I get attached to something, I will not be able to give my best. So that has been my uh, philosophy of work, that has been my practicing of work. So I thought I should uh, speak about how I run uh, my business connecting the health and the consciousness. The talk seeks to explore the interconnectedness between various apparently different categories and levels of existence and understanding. To the layman today, science and spirituality, the physical and mental, man and the world are distinct and disconnected from each other. But rationalists and empresses would concur that that nature point to the contrasting realms of operation. Any attempt to understand them on a common platform would seem remote. However, there is a strong evidence in the erstwhile oriental traditions that the universe works as a whole wherein all elements are in harmony. The discard outside is a reflection of that within. Once the unique yet holistic nature of the world is understood, the assimilation within the inner self would be achievable as well. While scientific research has begun to prove it with reference to the nature, Indian spirituality has always established it with reference to the self. The attempt then through this talk would be to trace the meeting points of science, health and consciousness through the prism of my life experiences in the different and diverse fields I have worked in. It is not so much a technical talk, but an experimental one. It hopes to also touch upon some commonalities like theosophy, whereby both become mutually meaningful. Having been taught 
right from the childhood the pitfalls of an egoistic approach the use of first person in here is only for convenience when i say i i doesn't i don't want to emphasize on the i i'm not trying to boost my ego it's just for the convenience i'm using the word i in some places here it becomes imperative to put forward a basic definition of three major terms of my talk that is health consciousness and application of science to human kind slide 3 slides are not being put here because i wanted the lights to be on here so i said but on the streaming part of it they'll be doing the streaming part of it slide 3 let's take health it refers to a state of complete physical psychological and social well-being and a resource for living a full life it indicates the absence of disease with the ability to recover and bounce back from illness and other problems a balanced diet exercise screening for good disease uh, screening for diseases and coping strategies that can all enhance a person's health the factors for good health include the environment relationships education control on mind and emotions among others move to the slide 4 how can one define consciousness which has such wide interpretations it can be defined as science or awareness or awareness of internal or external existence the development of which covers a lifespan of an individual from childhood to adulthood the alterations of thought leading to levels of consciousness can be due to physical psychological and social factors this morning i had a meeting with one of the enlightened persons in varanasi he had come from mumbai and i had gone to meet him and he asked me you're going to speak on consciousness but tell me where does consciousness arise from or what is the mother of consciousness i my wife was with me and my wife told me that it's the mind or the soul which you know generates the consciousness of the mother of consciousness and then he tried explaining to me that the soul and the matter when they meet and that's where the consciousness arises it's not the soul alone soul in an, is one aspect of consciousness so he tried explaining to me further by saying that when the sperm and the egg meet the energy which creates the energy which is generated is consciousness so that's how our consciousness flows in our body through our neurons the role of ethics and ahimsa the jaina tenets of anekantavad and aparigraha aparigraha means control on the needs the jaina system very clearly says that have as much as what you want or as much as you need but more than what you need you should give it back to the society you are not the owner of the wealth what you have you are only a trustee of the wealth what you have so you have to give it back to the society from where the wealth has come from and that has been imbibed very strongly in my mind right from my childhood the next step in this direction would be to analyze the application of science to health and consciousness some of the questions that reared this their head were what kind of research 
is being done into health challenges facing mankind. How do we connect researchers, pharmaceuticals, and the life science industry to promote inspired solutions to the same? With the reference to its application, it meant the introduction of the latest technology from domestic to the medical level. Can we move to the slide five, please? Hailing from a Jaina family with an academic background of engineering, my life's trajectory has been an evolution of both the scientific and the spiritual. Growing up with an insatiable curiosity for knowledge, no question seemed unanswerable. No problem unworthy of a solution. The focus was both on the cultivation of the body through the physical fitness and cultivation of mind through mental discipline. Slide six, please. At every juncture of my growth, the foundation principles of the Jaina faith which I follow have been like goalposts guiding me in the right direction. They have permeated both my personal and professional life. The fundamental tenets of Anikanta Vada, Karma, Tattvas, Tri Ratna, Triguna, Prakriti, Detachment, Ahimsa, coupled with a unique form of vegetarians, vegetarianism and regular fasting. Satsanga with Jain Munis with the realized souls and such deep philosophical concepts which instill discipline and focus in every activity. Slide 7. Further, I have learned some very important lessons of my life from my science background, from my pursuits of sports and arts. I have been constantly guided by the special emphasis of science on the following. Science is nothing else but observation, classifications, analysis, experimental ver verification, communication, measurement, adaptability, updation of the knowledge, skills enhancement, usage of technology, and goal of human welfare. This has, however, been with strict adherence to ethics. The influence of chemical engineering had a bearing on my mind to the extent we could enhance the, capa enhance the efficiency of the reactions, reduce time cycles without compromise on quality, protect the environment in all our chemical factors, are ever ready to abandon every idea that is proved erroneous upon strictly logical deductions a truly scientific attitude. Next we come to the cultivation of the body. Slide 8. It gave me an opportunity to understand the five elements that make us make up the ecosystem and the human organism. By learning to use different media on earth, yoga, asanas, pranayama, cricket, horse riding, golf. This is all I have been practicing. I have practiced all these sports in my youth. Water for rowing or swimming, air for flying. I am a certified pilot too. I was able to understand both my capacity and limitations. Like Vivekananda, Swami Vivekananda said, a sound, man, a sound mind in a sound body. The cultivation of mind become equally necessary. What better way to achieve than that by pursuit of arts, learning to sing, and, and, and we used to play guitar. The fine performing and liberal arts 
opened a whole new realm of artistic endeavors. The creative juices flowed in a, into a company launched for visual effects and animation in movies like Sony Image Works, which finally came and purchased the company before releasing Spider-Man 3. They said that we will not uh, release the movie unless we buy your company. So that was the strong conviction with the team from Hollywood had come and they bought the company in uh, 2007, 51% and the rest they bought in 2013. So the special effects have been Chennai, like Tim already explained, the Spider-Man series, Men in Black, I Am Blechin, Hancock, you name the big Hollywood movies, they were all the visual effects and the special effects animation was done in Chennai. Slide nine. These kindled in me the aesthetic sense to recognize the symmetry and balance in the world. It helped me synchronize varied fields and professions like a symphony conductor, bringing out the best in everyone. The symphony conductor may not be the best in every music uh, which is being played there, but he knows how to, you know, synchronize between every uh, player and bring the best out of it. And that's what I think I, I do in my life. By fine-tuning my sensitivity to people's needs, it helped me appreciate and empathize with the holistic consciousness at work in the world at large. The idea has highlighted in a quote from Theosophy, which says, Isis Advil, volume one, page 330, which says, harmony in the physical and mathematical world of sense is justice in the spiritual one. Slide 10, curation of the mind. Was not limited to only learning art forms. It also implied enlarging the dimensions through reading and networking, contributions to a training young minds through coaching, mentoring, as member of educational trust and providing opportunities for exploring various avenues of growth. I have helped 45 youngsters in India to start their own businesses, mentoring them and making them successful. I won't say that I am 100% successful. Out of 47, 45 have been successful. Two could not take it further. The Sashun Jain College for Women was founded as a tribute to the memory of my parents as a one-stop education provider for the bright, talented young women of today. Not content with being part of the standard academic system, centers of excellence were created to further enhance the skill sets of the students and the public. So health for me is all round well-being and growth of any an individual keeping pace with scientific research and technological advancement. This is guided by the individual consciousness in harmony with universal consciousness. The demands of scientific rigor became necessary for building a logical, foolproof system of research in here to uncharted territories of medicine, biotechnology, and pharmaceuticals. So I'm on slide 11. The entry of Sashun Group into chemicals and pharmaceuticals marked a major milestone in this direction. Fast changing lifestyles, precipitated unknown diseases, demanding newer drugs and treatment methods, pioneering work into stem cell research became a necessary. I'm also proud to tell you here that Sashun is the only pharma company in India 
to have distinction of bringing 36 new drugs in the world or the new chemical entities as drugs in collaboration with major pharma companies. The goal is the preservation of stem cells to fight and cure diseases. Through a revolution in modern healthcare, it was in keeping with ancient Indian tradition which revered, revered the umbilical cord between the infant and the mother and preserved it. The attempt was to carefully avoid any ethical issues in stem cells. So we store only the cord blood stem cells where there are no ethical issues other than the embryonic stem cells which has some ethical issues. So we deal only with uh, signs where there are no ethical issues. Slide 12, the introduction of nanotechnology ensured keeping pace with an accelerating technologi technological advancement. The goal of green nanotechnology is a production of nanoparticles with products with, without harming the environment or human health, being chemical free. We make nanoparticles of gold and silver through green nanotechnology without the use of any chemicals or synthetic uh, solvents. It was seen as a solution to many environments. Some of its classical features include existing principles of green chemistry and green engineering without toxic ingredients at low temperatures using less energy and renewable inputs wherever possible. Using life cycle thinking in all design and engineering stages and effective in treating issues of the world. It turned out to be both powerful, but this is the only antibiotic which is non-drug resistant. Today, the world is having a huge problem of having antibiotics where the drug resistance happens and the antibiotics become ineffective. Slide 13. The interconnectedness between science, health, and consciousness explained so far from a personal perspective also finds an echo in many thoughts expressed in theosophy. Some of them, I just want to quote them here. Right thought is a good thing. But thought alone does not count much unless it is translated into action. The idea, the next quote, the idea of universal life composed of individual atomic lives is one of the oldest teaching of esoteric philosophy. The next quote, the only decree of karma, an eternal and immutable decree, is absolute harmony in the world of matter as it is in the world of spirit. It is not therefore karma that rewards or punishes, but it is we who reward or punish ourselves according according as we work with, through and along with nature, abiding by the laws on which the harmony depends, or breaking them. The next quote, we believe that everything in material life is more, most intimately associated with spiritual agencies. In the last quote, which I want to quote here, is a physical existence is subservient to the spiritual and all physical improvements and progress are only the auxiliaries of spiritual progress without which there could be no physical progress. As a philosophy, the family had a very, very clear view that we will not enter into any meat processing 
or non-vegetarian industry, any alcohol or alcohol-based industry, and in leather and leather industry. We have ensured that we, have, we do not compromise on these philosophies of life. I would like to quote an incident here. We acquired a company in Newcastle. It was already a running factory in the United Kingdom employing You have to reason, you have to you know, put forth your mind and talk to them. And clear expressions about your sensitiveness. The fundamental tenets of a deeply ingrained religious faith could not be compromised for more novelty or commerce. Innovation had to come hand in hand with ethics. The struggle was deep and tiresome, but the balance was paramount for a sustainable future. For good health and happy living are non-negotiable. Each business venture proved to be an opportunity, not so much for the profit, but to provide people with the possibilities for progress and prosperity. The contribution to the society in general took on many fields, education, business model, philanthropy, and charitable work, health initiatives, cultural inculcation, scientific research, technological upgradation, value system, and social work. Further elaborating on the specific contribution to the society with reference to social work, removing mis misconceptions of requirements via time, money, knowledge, energy, recognition, was a task to be undertaken. According to the Jaina tenets of philosophy, the nature of charity or dan is of three types. Either you can contribute through money, which is the arthadhyan, arthadhan, which comprises the 45 entrepreneurs which I have helped them in setting up different ventures. Shramda, you can give physically, you need not give by way of money, but you can give by way of labor, by which a decent farewell to humans is given in the maintenance of a crematorium, which I undertook 27 years ago. And finally, Vidyadan, that is the giving of knowledge. So Vidyadan, by helping with ideation and planning to entrepreneurs, and running a women's college. We can see the parallel in Theosophy quote here. To live, to benefit mankind is the first step. And that is what we have done in all our work. If the interconnectedness of science, health, and consciousness had to make an impact on society, it had to start with creating awareness. Slide 16, please. The young end user being society at large, the building blocks had to be the young minds waiting to be trained. Thus, education became a prime mover in the sequence of events, bringing in its, bringing in its way the Sash Shankarlal Sundarbai Sashun Chain College for Women. Realizing a dream of empowering women through education, there was no full stops to go beyond. As a motto, all aspects, physical, psychological, cultural, ethical, technological, uh, technological aspects were enhanced while preparing young women for academic degree in basic purpose of recognition, recognition as a partner institution 
from National Skills Development Council and Media and Entertainment Skills Council, New Delhi, came after rigorous upgradation and facility and faculty. The aim to contribute to the society at the national levels has become a reality. We also, like Tim had already expressed, that we encouraged a team to be developed to compete in the Olympics of 2020. I'm proud to tell you that the Archer has been selected for the trials which are going to happen tomorrow in Pune for the Olympic uh, squad to be selected from India. And this girl, in the last 35 months of practice, today she scores the highest in the world. She has broken the world record many, many times on a daily basis. This has been a great phenomena, and I'm sure by 2020, when you see the results, we hope this girl really makes it to the top of the world. The other most recent developments in education sector has been a school in Rajasthan, where a land has been purchased in my native place where my grandfather was born, in a place called Butati. So we have purchased 20 acres of land to build a school which can provide education to the villagers there. We are not only building a school, we are building a, uh, a center where the food will be given at nominal cost. We are also providing a place where people can come and stay at very nominal cost. Slide 17. Again, I see the corresponding vision expounded in theosophy in the following quote. Theosophists do not believe in giving money through other people's hands or organizations. We believe in giving, to, um, giving, to the, uh, giving money a thousandfold, giving money uh, has a greater power, a thousandfold greater power and effectiveness by our personal contact and sympathy with those who need it. This is the key to theosophy. These seemed the right steps for scientific progress, intellectual and physical health. Where was consciousness in the scheme of things? Back to the, back to the basic beliefs. The Jaina doctrine, which shares so many similarities with theosophy, came to the rescue. It reinforced the notion that all living beings are connected in this universe. Explained in material terms by science, but experienced in spiritual life by evolved souls. Finally, it is important to build on our strengths while correcting our weaknesses. I believe with the integrated vision Acquired by balancing science and spirituality, certain positives have emerged. The synchronization of diversity, whereby it became possible to work with people of diverse thoughts, systems, but with one goal of the common good, the capacity of visualization, common good, <coughs> and the capacity of visualization to learn from any source. So I have ventured into various fields because I have never had a fear that I will not have the right source of people who can be hired with the right technology. Most importantly, I also want to tell you that if fortunes go well, we'll be starting a school in the Theosophical Society's place in Adyar. It was understanding the fundamental principles of science, thereby working towards their application for the welfare of humanity's health and elevation of consciousness. Wasn't that 
the Theosophist is explaining to the world, be humble. Be humble, it though was attained to wisdom. Be humble still, well wisdom that has mastered. That's the voice of silence. These so-called parallel paths of science and spirituality connected in a deeper understanding of consciousness, making life both useful and harmonious. This has given me the courage and desire to share these rather personal but transformational experiences, experiences from my life, hoping to reach out to some of you here in a better and fuller way. Slide 18 which really brought me to this place here when Tim asked me how do I manage such diverse interests of activities. I had just told him that when I start a business, I always think of an exit strategy. So exit is always in mind and when you have exit in mind, you're not attached to the business. You always look at it from a detached view, but bring in the best in every part of it. And that is what I say, put in your best effort, but practice detached attachment. Thank you. Thank you very much. At a level that perhaps many of us of us might be unfamiliar with. So once again, in uh, concluding, want to thank Abeya Sri Sri Mal Jain for his presentation on science for health and for consciousness. Again, thank you so much. The session is now closed. Thank you all.